If you like budget-friendly upgrades for your home, you're gonna love these peel and stick projects. Hey everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. I think that using DIY peel and stick products for home upgrade projects is a really simple and cost-effective way to give your home a designer look on a budget. Today I'm gonna share five of my most favorite peel and stick projects. I'm gonna show you how I did them from start to finish so that you can do these projects too. Plus I'm gonna give all of my tips and tricks on using these products so that you will get the best result in your home. Let's get started. The first DIY peel and stick product, which is probably my favorite one, is Peel and stick backsplash. You can buy these tiles in sheets from various places like the dollar store, Amazon, home improvement stores. But of all the brands that I have tried, my favorite is called Smart Tiles. You can buy this at a couple different home improvement stores and Amazon. I will make sure to leave a link to this product in the description box below. I like this one because of out of all the ones that I've tried, I feel like it looks number one, the most realistic. It sticks the best over time. I've had this in one of my campers for years and I find it really easy to install. Here's how to install DIY peel and stick tile backsplash. Measure out the square footage of your space to see how many tiles you'll need to purchase and buy a few extra tiles to account for any odd cuts or any mistakes that you might make. Prepare your surface by giving it a thorough clean with a degreasing cleaner and sand it if necessary to make it nice and smooth. Most tile backsplash, peel and stick should be able to stick to existing tile as long as the existing tile is smooth and clean. Cut the jagged edges off first with some scissors. You can mark a straight line with pencil and a hard ruler before you cut. Peel off the tile backing and then press it onto the starting corner of your wall. I like to start in the lower right corner of a backsplash. Once the tile is in position, press it firmly in place by smoothing it with your hand. Peel the backing off the next piece of tile and place it beside the first piece, making sure to align all of the corners. Once the tile is in position, press it firmly in place by smoothing it with your hand. Now you can continue in this manner until you finish the whole backsplash. If you need to cut around any windows, cupboards, or outlets, make a template with craft paper or measure and mark the piece of tile and cut it to size. Now once you're finished the installation, you can caulk any seams with a latex or a latex slash silicone caulking to prevent the seams from lifting. Peel and stick project number two is shiplap ceiling. I bet you didn't know you could make a shiplap look or a rustic wood look ceiling with a peel and stick product. For this project, I use a brand called Stickwood. It's a really thin sort of wood with a sticker type backing. These you can cut with a miter saw or with a hand saw. Incredibly easy to install. Once again, you're gonna save a ton of cost on labor installation because you can DIY this whole thing. And I think they look fabulous. I use these on our tray ceiling in our master bedroom as well as in my parents' home on their vaulted ceiling. So this product is pricey compared to all of the other products I'm sharing with you now, but if you think about the time that you save with labor as well as the ease of installation, I still think this is a great project to try and I think this one out of all of these, to me, looks the most high-end and custom. So to install peel and stick shiplap ceiling, measure out the square footage of your ceiling to determine how much wood you need to purchase and make sure to buy extra for cutting and mistakes. I'm gonna leave a link to Stickwood down in that description box below. 
Prepare your surface by cleaning it and sanding it as needed. Check the Stickwood website to see what kinds of surfaces will work for this application. Next, find the center of your ceiling with a measuring tape and mark it. Use a laser level to create a straight line to follow when applying the wood pieces. Choose the pieces of stick wood you want to use in the first row from the center. Now what I do is I peel off two of the three sticker backings from the first piece of wood, push the piece onto the ceiling, and then remove the final sticker backing piece. Press the wood firmly to the ceiling and use a roller if necessary. Continue applying the wood in this manner, staggering as you go. And also, I would definitely recommend using a laser level to ensure all of your lines are straight. Once you're all done, you can trim your ceiling with crown molding to finish the look. I've had our stickwood ceiling up in our master bedroom for five years. Still up there, nothing has fallen down, and I still absolutely love how this looks. You can also use this product for walls or even little feature areas in your home if you don't want to spend that much. Peel and stick project number three is creating a peel and stick wallpaper feature wall. In my opinion, using peel and stick wallpaper is so much easier than your traditional wallpaper, whether it's the one that already is pre-pasted or the one that you have to add paste to. It's less messy and it's essentially just a large vinyl sticker where you take the backing off and apply it to your wall. My favorite one so far is the Roommates brand. I'll link it down in the description box below like everything else. I find this one was quick, straightforward to install, and I didn't have any issues. This is a perfect product to create that show-stopping feature wall in hardly any time at all. So to apply peel and stick wallpaper, ensure your wall is clean, sanded, and smooth. Don't install peel and stick wallpaper on freshly painted walls. Definitely wait for the paint to cure for several days before applying. Measure out the square footage of your wall to determine how much peel and stick wallpaper you need to buy. And again, make sure to buy extra for cutting, pattern matching, and mistakes. Next, cut a strip that's slightly longer than the height of your wall and peel off just the first few inches of backing. Place a strip at the top corner of the wall, start smoothing it out onto the wall from the top to the bottom, and then just peel off that backing paper as you go. You can smooth it onto the wall with your hands or carefully with a plastic card. Continue applying the wallpaper in this way, lining up the pattern as you go, and then at the end just trim off any excess with a utility knife, and then you can add any trim work. If you don't want to install a full wall of feature wallpaper, you can buy peel and stick wall decals or decals if you live anywhere other than Alberta, Canada, and place them up on your wall for that nice pop of pattern and color. Peel and stick project number four is using contact paper to add some interest to the back of a pantry or to the base of a drawer. This is going to easily add some interest to those utility spaces in your home. And I use this beautiful vintage wood look contact paper from Amazon, line the back of our pantry with it, and I just love that extra little pop of texture. This is a thinner product than the peel and stick wallpaper that I mentioned before, but it's really essentially the same exact installation method. So just like all the others, make sure you're working with a nice, clean, 
potentially sanded surface. Measure out that square footage, determine how much you need to buy, and again, buy that extra bit for cutting, pattern matching, and any mistakes that you might make. Cut a strip that's slightly longer than the height of your wall and peel off the first few inches of backing. Place the strip at the top corner of the wall, smooth it out onto the wall from top to bottom, and then again, just peel off that backing as you go. Smooth it with your hands or with a card and continue applying it in this way, lining up those patterns, making sure it's nice and straight. At the end, trim off any excess with a knife, add your trim work, and you're good to go. You can install this in a similar manner if you want to protect and give a little pop of pattern to the inside of your kitchen drawers as well. This stuff is also really easy to remove if you're renting and you want something that can be removable after. The final DIY peel and stick project that I think you should try is installing faux marble countertops. Marble look adhesive film can completely transform a damaged countertop or a dated countertop. I've done this a few different times in our old camper, the new camper, and in my studio kitchen as well. My favorite brand is called DC Fix from Amazon. It's a vinyl sheet that has a really, what I think, real marble look to it. Again, it has that paper backing easy to apply as well. I've had this in my first camper for many years and it did hold up really well. This particular adhesive film is a lot thicker than contact paper, so I find it to be a lot more durable. Here's how to install faux marble countertops. To begin, clean your counter with a degreasing cleaner. If you're covering a wood countertop, you can also sand it to make it nice and smooth. Next, measure your counter and cut that contact paper or that adhesive film to the required size with sharp scissors. If you're using the DC Fix brand, you can use the grid on the back for straight cuts. And just make sure to leave extra product to wrap around the sides and the bottom of your counter. Gently remove just the first couple of inches from the paper and put it in place. Now you can begin smoothing the contact paper onto your counter with a plastic spatula, dry cloth, or your hand. Continue pulling off the backing and smoothing that vinyl onto your countertop a few inches at a time. Keep measuring, cutting, and applying the contact paper until your entire counter is covered. For extra adhesion and to help remove any air bubbles, here's my favorite tip. Move a hairdryer on a low heat setting over the covered surface to shrink that contact paper. And then you can just use your hand to gently press out any of those air bubbles. So those are my five favorite peel and stick home upgrades. Let me know down in those comments below which of these projects is your favorite. Have you tried to use any of these products before? Do you have any extra tips that you would love to share down in those comments? I would love to know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm gonna leave some more videos that I hope you will enjoy watching next right up here.